before the break, we proved uh, some facts about compact compactness, uh, in particular the intervals or K cells are compact, and something more generally, uh, a set is compact in Rn if and only if it's closed and bounded. Here's another uh, characterization of compactness that uh, is true in, in arbitrary metric spaces. Unlike the other characterization, which is only true in Rn, K is compact if and only if I claim every infinite subset of uh, K has a limit point in K. So this is a, a crucial fact about compact sets. Every infinite subset of K has a limit point in K. So if you think of compactness as a small set, compact set being small, does this characterization kind of make sense? That is, if you have an infinite subset of this thing and it's small enough, then all those points should do what? Here's something that's kind of a small set, and if you have infinitely many points, then what should be true? If you try to pack a large number of points in a small space, the points should what? They should accumulate somewhere, right? They should have a limit point. Everybody sort of see the intuition? Okay. Okay, so let's, that's basically the idea. So let's see if we can prove this. Proof. Uh, let's do the forward direction. What would what would uh, what would be go wrong uh, if every if there was an infinite subset that had no limit point? What would go wrong with the fact that it, it's it's compact? Let's see. Let's draw an alternate picture. Here's another picture. And now you have infinite subsets, a subset that has no limit point. So what does that mean about each of these particular points? They, they, they're, they, they're, they're sort of spaced out in some way. Why? How does that have to, what does that have to do with being a limit point or not being a limit point? Good. If this is not a limit, if this point is not a limit point, you could find a ball around it, yeah? You could find a ball around this one. You could find a ball around this one that doesn't, they might overlap each other, but they don't overlap the other points because this is not a limit point of any of the other points. Agreed? So that's the picture to look at. Uh, if, uh, so if, so we're doing this by contradiction. If no point, uh, if K has no limit points, sorry has a limit point in K. If no point of K is a limit point of uh, our set, can I give the set a name? Let's call the subset E. I'll call the subset E. If no point of K is a limit point of E, then each point Q in K has a ball around it as a neighborhood, let's call it VQ, that contains, you can make it small enough to contain at most one point of containing ex exactly one point of uh, K. The point Q of K. Or maybe another way to say it is containing no other point of K other than Q. That's what it means to not be a limit point. If no point is a limit point, then each Q has a neighborhood. Oh, but this is a cover. VQ cover E with no finite subcover. I'm going to abbreviate this. No finite subcover. Question. Yes.
Oh, uh, if every k is compact, if only if every infinite subset of k, uh, if, if and only if every infinite subset e of k has a Uh, yeah, sorry. Let me just let me just uh, think here. So we have some subset. The set E is are these infinite things. The set K is the entire big set. And the claim is that K is compact if and only if no matter which infinite subset you pick, uh, then uh, it doesn't have a limit point. Every infinite subset has a limit point that's that's actually in K. So the statement is is correct. Oh, oh yes. Okay, thank you. If no point of E, uh, no, no, no. We're if no, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. The limit point here is a limit point of E in K. Ah, thank you. Yes, yes. Right, which is what my picture suggests, but I just didn't draw uh, the thing exactly on the point of E. Thank you very much. Good. Thank you. Excellent. Okay, so in the forward direction, what I've shown is K can't be compact because this is a cover with no finite subcover. So, um, K, if, if th this is not true, then K is not compact, and that sh establishes the forward direction. All right, what about the reverse direction? The reverse direction assumes that every infinite subset has a, a V has a limit point in the set K. And uh, I'll just say that the reverse direction is actually a lot harder to show for arbitrary metric spaces. Uh, and the, the, the proof for arbitrary metric spaces is a, is a, is a, is a hard homework exercise, okay? Which, which may be a sign because there are hints. But I'm going to do the reverse direction for RK, even though it's true uh, more generally. It's, it's easier to get a sense of why it's true. So here, this proof uh, is for RK, but or RN if you like, but uh, it is true for all metric spaces. Okay, so if I want to show this is true for RK uh, for RN. Um, and I want to show that now that K is compact, if it has this property, what uh, other theorem might be helpful if I'm showing something is compact in Rn? Yeah, Keith is thinking Heine Burrell would help a lot here, right? Okay, so we'll show K is closed and bounded. All right. So that's, that's not bad. Suppose k isn't bounded. And I'm going to just sketch this uh, idea here. Suppose k is not bounded. What would that mean if k is not bounded? Uh, why would that contradict the fact that every infinite subset has a limit point if k isn't bounded? It goes off forever. Here's some set k. Not bounded, not bounded. You're trying to do this by contradiction. You assume that you're, we're assuming every infinite subset has a limit point. Why is it the case if k were not bounded that that might contradict that statement? Every infinite set, subset has a limit point. Can you think of an infinite subset that would not necessarily have a limit point? In this picture that goes off forever. 